Hi everybody and welcome to another modern video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys round four of a previously recorded league match. If you haven't been following this series of videos, I, uh, I'm showing you a league uh, playthrough that I didn't plan to actually record, so I'm having to do it as replays, but I thought that it ended up being a really good demonstration of the deck in a lot of ways, as well as showcasing some really interesting uh, just interactions. Um, and if you haven't been following the series, the two Condemns are kind of a concession to Eldrazi. They should be two Bolts. Um, I think I'm going to end up moving to a Click Main over the third Electrolyze and just maximize on the set of Blade Splicers. And the Click that comes out of the board will probably be in as a Static Caster. I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, but yeah, there's you know I talk about the deck through... All of, the, all of the videos, so if you haven't watched them, go do that. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys a replay. See you in just a moment. Okay, so here we are, and I had won the die roll. I was also on the play, so it's completely serviceable hand. Fine to just play out, uh, play out my wall next turn. Now... This could have been a few things. It could have been um, Lantern Control, although I think they mostly play Inquisition. It could have been some type of like Black Red Reanimator strategy. It also could have been Jund, and in fact I was hoping that it was Jund because I felt like this deck... Jund is one of the decks that I felt like can be really challenging for Jeskai, and I felt like this version of of a Jeskai deck could not make the matchup easy, but tilt the matchup in the favor of Jeskai because the deck has so many natural two-for-ones. Uh, Jun's single-targeted removal matches up kind of poorly against a lot of our creatures. Like, you know, what are they going to kill a Wall of Omens plus Wall of Omens draw a card and can clog up the board for a while? You know, thoughts. I'm not Thoughtseize, like Bolt and their removal spells aren't great against Pia and Kirin Dalar or Blade Splicer or Finks if we're running that. Um, they're kind of a tap out deck, so if they end up tapping out for something and we're able to, like, blink a uh, Blade Splicer with Restoration Angel, then we can end up, you know, really far ahead of them. So it's a, it's a matchup that I thought would be good for us or for the deck, and I was excited to see if it played out like I expected it to. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been doing a bit of recording, and I need to drink some water. <clears throat> okay, so our opponent thought sees this and, and took Pia and Kieran Nalar, which I, you know, is a great spell against them, but Thought seizing it out of our hand is probably one of the only ways to for them to effectively deal with it. And it meant that we got to keep all of our early plays. So for that reason, I wasn't incredibly bothered. Uh, our opponent doesn't know that we draw, drew a Spell Snare, and I believe he knew about the Mana Leak, but by keeping Mana up, you know, I kind of make him think, think twice about doing anything. Yeah, so here I think I was happy to play wall and hold up spell snare which he doesn't know that we have it can hit a bob it can hit a goif um, and this kind of played out just like just as i was hoping it would could have played a wall here our opponent knows about the leak but i'm fine to just make him play around it while we continue to try and hit land drops Felt like Snapcaster Mage casting Spell Snare was probably the most card advantageous card advantageous way to deal with the Tarmogoyf. Obviously, we had a path, but uh, I think he doesn't know about any of them, so we don't necessarily want to show them. Um, this means that if he at some point like bolts our Snapcaster Mage, we've traded for a card there, but Spell Snare on the Tarmogoyf is actually a card advantage play for us. Because we didn't technically not have to spend a card out of our hand to deal with it. This also means that if he like plays a Liliana, which he did, 
his minus is bad uh, because of wallow moments, and then we get to attack it. So I probably discarded a leak. Yeah, because a he knew that we had one, and b they're starting. The, the game's getting to a point where they're bad. And I believe I just decided to go ahead and get the Liliana off the board. And again, he knew we had one mana leak, so there is a chance that he. Okay, no, no, no. I think I looks like I just decided to go for a wall. Oh, because I really wanted to hit a land draw, which I made a big mistake there. Uh, okay, this isn't recording, but I'm fairly sure that I can tripped and then didn't play this land. Which would have been the whole reason to actually play a wall instead of hold up leak. Because like right now we could have just mana leaked the, the Liliana, but Yeah, so kind of just awkward play on my part. This could have gone better, obviously. Okay, so it looks like I path the wall, because our opponent has no cards in hand, so... He is Hellbent, and... He's sort of forced to draw a removal spell. Um, now let's see if I... Okay, so that I, I believe that that was kind of... It wasn't a huge mistake, but if I knew I was going to draw a card, then um, I should have just done it as upkeep. Although, him killing the wall so that we don't get the card draw doesn't... Yeah, I think that's probably better. Um, so we should have done this at the upkeep, kind of another slip-up if we knew that's what we're going to do. And the reason is, if we let him draw a card and it's a removal spell, then he can... In response to the trigger, he could like terminate a wall, um, at which point we don't draw a card, and then he can mine this Lily and kill our Kiki Jiki. So, So here, I choose to Helix Liliana, obviously, because I don't want him to ultimate it. But again, I think if I'm going to draw, then doing it now uh, would have been better. So it's good that we actually... Um, got the second wall, because now we can copy this one. But we're... Um, and... and this is why this is why it's important to do this kind of thing at his upkeep. Um, so I don't know why I wasn't realizing that at the moment, but by doing it as upkeep before he draws a card, then we make sure our ability goes off. Um, like if we were if we hadn't played the other wall, we would have been in a really crappy position because we would have tried to copy the wall, he would have killed it, and then he would have made us sacrifice our Kiki Jiki. So now our our card advantage engine is gone. Um, but this is going to be just, um, this is something else I've noticed against these kind of grindy decks. While Kiki Jiki on Restoration Angel is ideal, on Blade Splicer, just one copy is probably enough to win the game. So what we can do here is go ahead and make our copy now and give the other Blade Splicer haste and attack Lily and, you know, just... We had a Kiki Jiki, and this is one of the things I like about this deck, say... This is one of the things I like about this version of the deck over some of the more control-based decks, is we went from having a Kiki Jiki, which was kind of sitting by himself, to suddenly getting a haste creature and having five creatures on the battlefield. Now, this will go away, but we've suddenly gone from one creature to a completely developed board that our opponent is going to be very unlikely to deal with unless they're running main deck damnations, what I, which I don't expect them to do after um, the Eldrazi decks rotate out. So, 
even though I made a couple of mistakes there and could have played tighter, uh, I think it was still a reasonable demonstration of how these cards um, can really just give us enough value to outgrind decks like Jund. Now, I'm not saying it's a Jund killer. I think Jund is still an awesome deck. Um, but I do think we're much better positioned than some of the other versions of Jeskai. I think we can actually out mid-range Jund. Uh, so I'll see you guys for the next game. Okay, game two. Um... I don't remember everything that I boarded in in this matchup. I think I boarded in Relics, um, mainly because of like Scoos and Tarmogoyf. Uh, we're also not as reliant on our graveyard as some of the you know versions of this deck with four Snapcaster Mages. Uh, in this version I was running, this is still a version where I was running Kitchen Fink. So right now this, in the new version, would have been a Blade Splicer. Kind of curious to see how that actually might matter. Decided to take our wall, which I found a little interesting. I, I would have expected him maybe to take the Kitchen Finks, but I guess he feels like this coupled with like Restoration Angel is going to just potentially be a card advantage nightmare for him. So he's stuck with the plan. I decided to... I don't know if this was necessary, but I guess I felt like... Outside of Bob, there's not a bunch of targets for our burn. I mean, it's good against Lily, but I guess I figured if he is thought seizing him, just get to work on his life total right away. He decided to take the Finks. So because of the thought seizes and bolts and helixes, I mean, our opponent is at. Uh, 11. Alright, so I believe I discard the Helix. And I... Let's see what I did here. But I feel like, yeah, I think I opted not to even play this land. That way I can try to... I still may draw a land. And maybe he'll minus, And then I can hold on to this. Um, but... I didn't want to discard the Restoration Angel because I feel like it's just a way for us to build an incredible amount of value. Which turned out to be the right decision because that's how we chose to... Uh, that's how we chose to kill our Finks, which means that we get to flash out our threat... Oh no, we had the steam vent, so I still get to kind of hold on to this. I didn't need to flash out the Restoration Angel and give him the information. I just get to discard the steam vents. Uh, and so now I get to play Restoration Angel on the turn and then get rid of the Liliana, which is obviously a problem. And we still need to draw a way to get rid of this Raging Ravine, which we were lucky and top deck the path. I won't say that we're lucky, I mean... I drew the spells that I put in the deck. <laughs> so now we sort of get to turn this back on our opponent and make him find an answer for our threats. Which again, this is sort of showcasing how I expect this matchup to go. Um, we drew a Blade Splicer. Our opponent has a card in hand. So, you know, um, let's say it's a Terminate. He can still kill this, but now he's got two bodies and four power to deal with. And if we draw a Restoration Angel, if he kills this, and then our next draw is like Restoration Angel, or assuming we had another land, a Kiki Jiki, then we're again just going to sort of generate so much value. I think I just sacrificed the Blade Splicer here. Obviously we can kill Kiki Jiki. Opponent chumps, which obviously we're happy with. I'm sorry, I say kill Kiki Jiki. I meant Liliana. Uh, but it looks like I just opted to... Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I'm having to just 
remember why I made the decisions. Um, because Lily's at one, it's technically not a removal spell for either of these creatures. So, and we don't have any cards in hand, so the discard doesn't really do much against us. So, obviously this is a lethal attack. And Lily can minus, but at this point, we really just don't care. And so, that sort of actually just textbookly played out like I thought it might. Um, and, you know, if Jun becomes another big player in the format, then... I really like playing a deck that has potentially a positive matchup, even if it's a small positive matchup against the deck, which is where I feel like normally with the Geist deck or even just Kai Control, it's much more 50-50 and potentially can be sometimes almost feel like 55-45. Uh, I will say that against Abzan, um... It's hard to say if we have an edge. I, th I think we might be able to race Lingering Souls, and I think Abzan is grindier than this deck. But uh, anyway, guys, that's the video for today. Uh, as always, I will see you tomorrow, but if I don't talk to you until then, draw well, smash face. Bye.